What are we starting with this week, Jamp? Um, we're trying to think what we haven't done in a while. We review, but but the podcast, uh, Spotify, re- Spotify, 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 review. Spotify, what time? <laughs> <laughs> a podcast yes we're starting we're a podcast, doing a podcast. Okay, as we do every week so uh i just wanted to give you guys a heads up on where we are on spotify so we've got over twelve thousand followers but twelve thousand seven hundred right now oh amazing that's gone right? up a lot. so if you want us to shout you out as a spotify follower all you need to do is follow us on spotify screenshot that and tweet it at sly guys pod yeah 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 and we much. can shout you out right now Instead of just talking about Spotify, we'll say your name. It's actually a live stream. It's going on all the time. <laughs> Whenever you hit play, just come on, follow right now. I'll read out your name. <laughs> Hello, Jeff. No, there's no one called Jeff. Hello, Alex. There we go. <laughs> That's Hello, generic man. enough. It's generic. I like it. Hi, Sam. That How are you, Sam? Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a question to start this week as well, don't we? We do. do I, we? You don't know yeah, this. We I, do have I don't prepare the show. You do. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> So the question for you this week, head into the comments and answer this question. Let us know, where's the farthest you've been from home? I mean, here for you, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that, like this is my home. home. Well, now, Aww. yeah. Oh, now. So Australia, I guess. <laughs> 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 One or the other. <laughs> Liz, what about you? What's the farthest you've been from home? Probably South Korea. I mean... Oh yeah, I mean that's, that's pretty far. Yeah, <laughs> I mean probably. Oh, I might have, I might have popped a little. Far. to take a guess. Um. Fantastic. All right. Well, why don't we start the show? Wait. What about you? I don't know. Yeah, where have you been? <laughs> Scotland. That's it. It's here I in have Scotland. been. Oh, America or Cyprus? I don't know geography. America. They're basically the same place. Aren't America. They? Yeah. It's farther. Oh no, I think I. Oh, I remember learning that Cyprus wasn't an island off England, but then I for- have forgotten that. And so now, where is it? Greece. Yes. yes. I just realized that actually um, I flew to LA. So no, yeah, definitely LA. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah definitely probably, yeah, farther yeah. away than both of those places. Wait, where's New York? I've been to New York. How far is that? It's five hours away. And a lot of flights. So a lot further away from Australia. There you go. That's the farthest I've been. It was ge- it genuinely took me like 30 hours to get there from Australia. It's, really? disgusting. <gasps> it's disgusting. Whoa. That's anyway. insane. Shall we start the show? Let's start the show. (laughs) Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Jamp, and special guest, Bliss. Hello, Hello, Bliss. Bliss. Hi, Corey and Jamp. This week, we're going to go balls deep. Oh, God. Again, I've used Again, that one before. we've done this before. We have done this before. Yeah. But the last time... What are you doing? <laughs> no. Did we use that for the science testicles? No. It was a bonus episode. No, that yeah. was a bonus episode. We used that for In Too Deep, the episode where we spoke about uh, going deep in the water. Mm. But this, t- this time, today, this week, we're going to go deep into something else. Space. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, the opposite of space. It's matter. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Earth. The Earth. Oh, oh yeah. the Earth. Which is basically the sea. <laughs> you go. The sea's part of the Earth. <laughs> you, sure. you go up to space, you go down into the ground. Oh, okay. Right? We're going. Mm, yeah, I guess. Yeah? Sorry, I'm just thinking, well, space is all around us. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you go down enough, soon enough you will get to space again. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, true. Deep into time. <laughs> I prefer that. <laughs> no, so. Um, what do you guys think is at the center of the earth? Lava. I mean, yeah. That's a pretty good guess. Yeah. yeah. There's, so there is like molten rock down there. Okay. That's like the sort of, that's one of the layers. Oh, okay. But not the, not the very mm. center. Not the very, very center. Okay. I think we've spoken mm. about it recently on Sci Guys Live. Did we? I think we did. <laughs> I forget. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your guess, Jump? What's your guess? Um, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's what? where the moon comes from. <laughs> the center of the earth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> The Earth is an egg, and it births the moon. Yeah, science. Wow. It just slowly builds up. It starts as a cheese ball, and then it slowly builds up plaque around it, which is what the, the moon is in its early life. So it's going to build up plaque eventually, and it's going to become another. It's going to become another Earth. Earth. Wow. It's going to become a planet. Yeah. That's wow, cool. that's really Thank cool. You. Yeah. So we usually, uh, we usually when we're talking about the inside of the Earth. We've got, um, so you've got the, well, you've got the crust, obviously, right? That's what we live on. Some things are mantle, right? Yeah. So I don't know what <laughs> I was going to say it's below the crust, but everything else is below the crust. <laughs> it's also so. technically above the crust as well, depending on your oh. point of view, oh. right? Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> which weighs down? What do you Doesn't exist. 
<laughs> we spoke about this already. Everything is relative. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, you've got the crust, um, which is the outside, which is what we sit on and walk on and live on and whatnot. Um, and then... Um, the ocean is also on the crust, just to clarify. Y- yes. Okay, good. Yes, that sits on top of the crust. Okay. It's, it doesn't go crust, ocean, rest of the earth. No. Okay, good. No, okay. it's kind of... Think of it as like a, think of it as like a pizza, right? No, don't think of it as like a pizza. That'd be silly. Mm. Um, the crust is just the outside. That's about five kilometers. <laughs> that's about five kilometers thick. Um, well, between five and 75 kilometers thick. Obviously, the crust is different widths, okay. different Very parts of the earth, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've got the mantle, which goes um, down to about 2,900 kilometers. Ooh. Wow, so that's a thick one. Yeah, it's quite thick. Yeah. Um, and then um, the core is about 3.5 3,500 kilometers out from the center of the earth. And it's got two parts. There's two parts to the core. So there's the inner core and the outer okay. core. Uh, yes. And then there's the mantle and then the crust. The crust and crust on top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so what do you what do you know about the, core, the center of the earth? Just, just Bren- any- Brendan Fraser went there one time. He did, didn't he? He did, yeah. I think The Rock went there as well with Josh Hutcherson. No, that was some mysterious island. I'm not. That was Journey to the Center of the Earth and then Journey... Journey to the, to the mysterious, mysterious island. island. Yeah, was was that? Was, I've never watched the second one. Was that in the center of the earth? No, journey. Journey to the center of the earth, and it was journey to the number two, yeah, yeah, the yeah. mysterious island. That was but the, the mysterious one. island doesn't necessarily have to be in the center of the earth. Yeah, but that was the second one. It was a sequel to Journey to the <laughs> yes, center of was. the earth. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Brendan Fraser got stuck in the center of the earth. So we're like, we have to go Wait. somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> we have to pick so another rude. location. Journey to. <laughs> I don't know, the island. <laughs> Journey three <laughs> space. <right? laughs> um, okay. Let's talk about science again. So Okay, what do we know? What do we know about the center? Of what about the... its temperature? Is it is it cool? No. It's very hot. Very, right? Isn't it hotter than the sun? So parts of the parts of the center of the earth are hotter than the surface of the sun. Wow. Or about the, the heat of the surface, the temperature of the surface of the sun. But it's not lava the very center. You've said that already. It's not it's lava, sun. no. No. Okay. I mean lava is molten rock. So the center of the earth um is made of um it's nickel and iron. Oh god. So wow. the center the very center is yeah. um this solid oh. just ball. Oh. Um and then the outside of the center so the, there's the inner core and the outer core. So the inner core is like this solid ball, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and the outer core is is liquid. And the liquid doesn't melt the solid. No. Well, okay. So you got to think about it this way, right? There's two things that I mean, two things that kind of um, control how solid or liquid something is, okay, generally, yeah. right? Is pressure and temperature. Okay. Right. Right. So if you increase the pressure, um, if you so if you increase the pressure, then um, it's more. It, it needs more temperature to be solid. Uh, to be, oh. uh, to, it needs it needs to be a higher temperature to, to become liquid. To become solid. liquid. Okay. Right. right. This is like why when you go to space and there's basically zero pressure, all of the like all of the liquids in your body will boil off immediately because the temperature required to get them to boil drops. Mm. Right. So as you mean the the liquid on the surface of your skin. What are you talking about? What we, what's so, boiling off? If you were in space without a spacesuit. Oh, okay. Your sorry. blood would basically okay. boil. Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> without, a space without, without a space without a space that's, so that's, that's why we have space suits yeah that's why we have yeah. <laughs> see this is because when I think oh you know if you're in space I just think oh in space without a space suit I feel like I need to clarify yes. that you, you are wearing you shouldn't have space. to do that I just <laughs> just for me no he should <laughs> no I should I should no one is going to space without space suits right thus far in human history most people in space have been comfortably sealed inside of a yeah. space suit so the space suit is protecting your liquids from boiling up. Well, yeah, among other things, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and helping you breathe and you know, you know other little things. Oh, the, just the little, the, the tiny little. little things. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, so as as the as the pressure um increases, the yeah the temperature needed to basically melt or boil also increases. Okay, is it like the highest pressure in the universe is like always in the center of um planets no i mean so okay so some planets don't have a lot of geothermal a- activity going on so the right. thing the, the thing is that um the the highest sort of pressure what well, i don't know where the highest pressure in the universe is but okay um essentially the reason that there's a lot of pressure in the center of a planet is because if you think about it there's so much more planet on top of you pushing down okay right so pressure mm-hmm. is essentially like um force over area right yes so yeah yeah so like if i'm um if i'm pushing down um <gasps> Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. So if you yeah. push down with like, the <clears throat> same with the same force, right, on your hand, 
um, there is less pressure with three fingers than there is with one finger, even if it's the same force, right? And a pin, for example. Yeah, and a pin, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And th you can see this when you um, when you go when you're in water and you try to swim deeper and deeper and deeper, right? Your ears start. Well, your ears will like sort of pop and stuff, and mm -hmm. you'll feel like your head will feel literal, funny the yeah. deeper that you go because you if you're like one meter underwater mm. let's say you've got you've got um, you've got basically um a u-shaped sort of like column of water above you that is one meter tall right, right? <clears throat> if you go another meter uh like deeper in water you've then got a two meter column that is u-shaped ab above you pushing down on you on the same area mm. right your area doesn't change but the amount of water above you changes yeah is that related to gravity yeah Okay. Yeah. So the force that so gravity is causing that force. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah. So that's how the pressure at the that's how the pressure at the center of planets is so high. I mean, like, there's probably higher there there is there's probably higher pressure somewhere else. You can, I don't know, maybe the center of a star. You okay. Could say. Yeah. But then you would burn out. It's wait. Is the you know in a black hole or do yes. we not know? Like, is the pressure is there really a lot of pressure in there? This is the thing, right? It's. <sighs> It Always would be that. difficult to determine that in terms of pressure because it's a black hole isn't right with at the center of a planet, right? There's a lot of stuff, right? Pushing okay, down yes. on you. Whereas a black hole is but, uh, like there is a there's a point of mass mm -hmm. in a black hole. And so I guess you could say that the pressure on that like if there was anything at that point, the, the pressure on it would be astronomical. Yeah. But th that's not really possible. Because it becomes the point once you've part of it like yeah just the, the way that the <laughs> black holes don't work intuitively mm. right okay. like you you got to like a black hole is essentially the the easiest way for us to think of a black hole is like there's an event horizon there's a point at which if you cross it you will never yeah. leave the black hole mm -hmm. but that's not the singular sort of singularity at the center of the black hole which is like where all that mass is being sort of concentrated and okay. pulled towards yeah mm. yes. so pressure when it comes to i guess black holes and even stars it can be difficult to figure that out yeah. But sorry, back to the Earth. No, back, back to, to the Earth. earth yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying that the, the core of the Earth is really hot. So it's uh, nickel iron. It's um, a big ball of nickel and iron. It is about 5,400 degrees centigrade. That's pretty toasty. It's pretty hot. That's pretty hot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's like I said, it's, um, well, I think as one of you said, it's similar in temperature to the surface of the sun. Um, and then the outer core is more liquid. Uh, and then... Um, it's kind of a similar temperature, but it obviously gets hotter and hotter towards the center. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and it's spinning, isn't it? Yeah, it also is. Oh, it also yeah. spinning. Wow, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the, the the core is spinning, which is um, really important for Earth's magnetic field. Mm. Ah, yeah. And so it's spinning separately. Hang on, is is the Earth spinning? Okay. The Earth's spinning because we're yeah, it's got yeah. a yeah. flipping egg. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's spinning, really. Yeah, just... <laughs> most things, most things are actually spinning. But yeah. it's spinning separately to the. Uh, to my understanding, yeah, because it co it creates um, it creates the sort of magnetic field that okay. protects us from solar radiation Aliens. and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> maybe you know what? Maybe maybe it is. Protect I don't know. Honestly, I don't think we would know if it was protected. <laughs> True. <laughs> Um, so yeah, how do you go? How do you think that um, we know what's at the center of the Earth? Oh, Someone went there. Shit. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, no, right. that's not true. That's <laughs> no, not true. No. I'm guessing they put a rod down. They like drilled a really thin rod down, and that was able to like feel things that's, and yeah. give us some measurements. So yeah, you'd think that, right? Yeah, that's how you feel. you feel like we should be able to. We should be able to just dig down, but we can't. Mm. Wait, what? Where does lava come from? Does that come from the core? No. No. Okay. No. I was like, maybe it comes out of volcanoes and I just studied that. <gasps> but oh. that's not true. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, the co bear in mind, right? The core. <laughs> don't sound amazed, but that's not yeah, true. Because I was like, wow. I was wow. like, no, you just said it's not true. That's not what it is. <laughs> 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 <I love that. laughs> Just literally tell me anything. Oh, you wow. Got, it's not true. <laughs> you got to remember that the center of the earth, right, mm -hmm. is farther away than space. <gasps> no. Wait. Oh, yeah, because space is like 100 kilometers up. Space is it? 100 kilometers. Yeah. Well, if you're America, I think. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, it's... What? 120 something. Something like that. that yeah. yeah, something. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little less if you're American. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's say space is 100 kilometers away, right? Okay. Space is 100 <laughs> kilometers away. If you were to go 100 kilometers down... 
you would probably be in the mantle. Whoa. But not wow. even not far into the mantle. Remember, because um the crust is five to seventy five kilometers thick. And the mantle is it goes down to two thousand nine hundred kilometers. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So space is closer than the center of the earth. Wait, how did they define um the start of space? Oh, I can't remember I can't remember. We, we did this in we a did we, do an okay. episode on we did it. do an episode on this. Yeah. Do you remember what episode it was? Lost Cosmonauts? That's probably it. Lost Cosmonauts. Something like that. That's was, in the sixties. As in the episode numbers. Really? Pretty sure. No. No, it's way earlier than that. Look, it's, we, it's in the 30s. Do you know what we'll do? I, I will do this when I get when I get home today. I will make a playlist of different episode themes so that whenever Ooh. we talk about something, you can go ahead and watch one of those episodes. So go and check out the space themed playlist and you'll probably find out why. Because I can't remember. I was so wrong. It's actually episode 27. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, it might be that one. Yeah. Check out episode 27. Maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so the the core is the core is hot, um, as we as we know, and we don't we haven't actually gone to the center of the Earth. Okay, right, we we can't. I'll get into that in a little bit. So we actually use essentially earthquakes to figure out what's at the center of the Earth. Essentially, um, you know how what happens? Do you know what happens when an earthquake goes? Right. Okay, let me think. It's um the tectonic plates of the Earth like rubbing against each other. Yeah. So like yeah, exactly. So yeah. there's there's like fault lines and stuff, and an earthquake will basically yeah. Yeah, um, but that what that does is it sends seismic waves through the planet. Yeah, and it like they can travel through the Earth, like right, right through the Earth. Mm -hmm. um, and using basically, if you can measure an earthquake from one side of the planet on another side of the planet, then you're basically you're measuring the waves that have gone through the entire Earth. Right. So you can ah. figure out what's in the center of the Earth using those waves. Right. That's clever. Oh, okay. It's like it's not exactly. It's, if you were to shine light and a, a flashlight. Yeah. All the way through a fish tank. Mm. Okay. You could see what was in that fish tank. Or at least you could figure out what was in that fish tank based on looking at the light from the other side, right? Okay, yes. Okay, yeah, think of it sense. kind of like that way. Like I said, we don't know what's, we don't actually specifically know what's at the center of the earth. Like we've got a good idea, bear in mind, like, but we don't know. It's not like we've gone down there and seen it or we've taken samples or, mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. like that. We've just had to sort of figure it out based on measurements, um, measurements using um, seismology. Um, so, like I said, there's a kind of mystery at the core. Um, I said that it was um, nickel and iron. It's about eighty percent iron. Most, it's mm. mostly iron. Yeah. Um, and yeah, basically, we, we we want obviously we want to know what's going on there. Um, and there was there's kind of a difficult um, difficult path to figuring out what was going on because again, like I said, we can't just dig. It feels like we should be able to dig, right? I yeah. in my heart, I am I like in my head, I know that the Earth is big. And I know it's hot down there. <laughs> and I know that we cannot dig. Yeah. But in my heart, it just feels wrong that we can't just dig. Bank holiday weekend, grab a shovel. <laughs> go for your life. <laughs> <laughs> if we all did it together. If we all just, like, if you just, it feels like if you just don't stop. Just, you, the only reason we haven't gotten to the center of the earth yet is because people keep on giving up. That's yes. how I feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but really, so it's too, too hot. Is that it? It's too hot and too far. Yeah, there's so there's there's That's a few the... reasons. There's quite a few reasons. I'll so I'll I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Okay. There's okay. there's a there's a little story with that. So you might be asking, if we can't dig down there, how do we know what's down there? Yes. Are you asking exactly. that? Exactly. I'm still asking that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me let, <laughs> to me, this let very me, day. Let me hear it, please. Oh, how it's down there. Well, if we can't dig. <laughs> <laughs> Painful. Um, so there were two scientists who Never, were never nominated for a Nobel Prize. Um, Richard Oldham and Inga Lehmann. Lehmann. A Danish person and, a, and an English person. Uh, uh, try and figure Walked out what's going on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so essentially, like I said, um, there are, we use earthquakes, right? We use um, seismic waves. Um, so there are two different types of seismic waves. There's primary and secondary. P waves and S waves. Okay. You can see why they're named that. Yeah. So primary waves are probably the easiest ones to understand. So they, um, they're they quick. Um, they travel about five kilometers per second. Um, in it, it, it depends on what kind of rock it is. But in, mm. say, granite, they, they travel at five kilometers per second. Um, and they can travel even faster than that, up to 14 uh, kilometers per second um, in different types of rock. Um, and then there's S waves. They're slower. Um, and essentially, the thing is that... Um, P waves kind of, I guess, compress when they pass through. They pass through stuff kind of like sound waves. So it kind of um, essentially pushes one part of the rock against itself and it kind of 
Do you know what I mean? It okay, pushes yes. that way right the way through. Yeah. That's how they travel, right? Whereas um, S waves are slower and they travel a little bit differently. Um, S waves kind of, they move from side to side almost, right? Well, they more move from side to side, whereas P waves kind of compress, S waves move from side to side. Mm -hmm. um, and P waves can travel through liquid, they can travel through solid. S waves can only travel through solids. Okay. Ah, I see. Right? Okay. So. Oh, I think I feel like I know where this is going. Yeah, let me tell me. Where do you yeah. think it's going? Where? So I'm guessing that they realized when they could feel, feel, they could, I'm guessing they use, did they use a seismograph? Yeah, is yeah. That a thing that or a seismometer, oh. I think. Yeah, seismograph or seismometer. <laughs> okay. I can't remember the name. Um, On one side of the planet, the opposite side of the planet to the, to where the earthquake was happening. Mm -hmm. And... There was no, oh, hang on. Oh, they measured the each wave and was like, this is how much liquid or solid there is or something like that. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're pretty spot on. So, I mean, if one of them can't travel through um, a liquid, then you can, it was size, seismometers, by the way. Size, I just read it in my notes. Seismometer. Yeah. Seismometer. Seismometer. Yeah, like thermometer. Mm. Okay. Size. But for size. Yes. <laughs> so, it's a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> My Do you reckon when they were coming up with the ruler, they were like, I'm going to call this a seismometer. <laughs> oh, damn it. It's already taken. Oh. Fine, you geologists, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what actually happened was um, Richard Old Oldham um, had basically been working in India um, using a seismometer measuring different, um, me measuring different se uh, seismic waves. Um, and he essentially... Um, he accumulated all of the data that he had um, and he essentially used it to figure out what was going on at the center of the earth. Um, and there was, there was some strange, like basically there was some strange stuff going on because if you were, if a seismic wave traveled through the earth, right, you'd expect to see, if it was solid, you'd expect to see both P waves and the S waves. Mm -hmm. Expect to see the P waves come first and the S waves come after, but yeah. it wasn't really working out like that. And then he figured out, okay, based on this, there must be some liquid at the at the center of the yes. earth because otherwise stopping yes yeah, stopping waves. it exactly yeah. so that's how we figure out there's some liquid going on there and we thought it was all liquid um until um until we realized that essentially it it wasn't based again on the way that the waves were coming through this is all like i mean if you think about it kind of like um the p waves almost refract through the liquid in the way that um light refracts through through water yeah. mm -hmm. or through glass um it, it's kind of like figuring it out that way. I mean, if you think of the waves as kind of like, it, it's not exactly like this, but if you think of the waves as essentially like shining a torch through something, like mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of how they're, how they're doing it. Um, and seeing what it like sort of bounces off of or whatever, or using almost, almost like using echolocation in a cave, right? To try and figure out what, what's going on where. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, when it comes to finding out what's at the center of the earth, it's not straightforward. It's not just digging or looking or, um, you know, asking someone, you got to essentially... <laughs> Have you been there? Do you know what's there? <laughs> no, 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 Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> sir. Mr. The Rock. What was down there, sir? Mr. Fraser? No, um, no, it's essentially using, <laughs> using um, seismic waves to figure out what, what is... It's almost like inferring from those seismic waves mm -hmm. um, to see what's, what has and has not... Uh, mm. What is and is not there. And this is the thing. It's not just... Um, it's it's not necessarily as clear as you think it would be. Like we don't know as much as you as you'd think. Like I remember being taught in school that um oh this is what the center of the earth is and yeah we've got a good idea. But there's also some mysteries. So for example, um there's kind of this weird sort of shadow that's that um that is there at the center of the earth. There's this kind of like um there's this kind of thing going on where we're not entirely sure what is happening i'm not explaining it very well but it's, it's essentially that a shadow yeah some kind of like ominous no yeah like we don't there's some kind of like um not blip in the data but yeah, yeah there's something there's some kind of anomaly and we're trying to figure out what is going on at the center of the earth because there's, there's some change um i mean some interesting things here is that um when you uh, when waves pass through the core from north to south they travel faster than when they travel basically east to west or west to east oh my gosh so if you travel what? travel from the north pole to the south pole it's faster yeah. than going like in line with the equator yeah oh. um yeah and it's but at the apparently at the very very center of the inner core which is the solid metal bit um mm -hmm. in, the, in the very center of the earth um that is slightly different 
um, it's off by about 54 degrees. So it's so it's it's faster to travel north to south, right? But in the very very center of the core, yeah, that is off by fifty four degrees. So it's faster to travel fifty four degrees off oh my north gosh. to south. Oh. Yeah, and they're not sure why. So this has been for about twenty years ago. They noticed this. Um, and apparently, they're still <laughs> they're still working on. It. They're still trying to they're still trying to figure out um, what this sort of signal is. So there could be like an inner inner core, basically. I mean, Possibly. May, maybe something like that. It could be something. I, I honestly, I have no idea what it could be. Yeah. Okay. All right. I know is that there is there's it, there's this sort of like anomaly yeah. going on, and it, it like um this is a quote from uh, this is a quote from a scientist work uh, working on this. She said, uh, "This isn't just noise in the data. This there this is really something that's there." So, weird. Yeah. This is there is some weird little anomaly, mm. and we don't really know what it is. Do and it. Yeah. Go on. Oh, sorry. I was just wondering. Do you know if it's when they've met, been measuring it over time, if it's like, does it seem stable in there? Or do, do things change? Well, for the last 20 years, they've, they have they noticed it 20 years ago. And for the last 20 years, it's been it's been consistent. Yeah. It's been off by about 54, de 54 degrees. And again, like like I said, it's important to, like the, the scientists went on to say that it's important to understand what is going on at the core. Mm. Because the core is really important for... Um, Earth's magnetic field. Yeah. Right. Okay. And Earth's magnetic field is really important because it stops it stops um sort of uh rogue um it, it protects us from radiation. Yeah. For one thing, it, it's it's it, there there are a lot of things going on with magnet the magnetic the Earth's magnetic field that you probably wouldn't think of mm -hmm. um that are important for life. Not to make like compasses, for example. All the compasses in the world would simply That's just true. stop working. We wouldn't we wouldn't be alive wow. without compasses. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We just we could not be. We could not. We could not live. I mean, unless you use one on your iPhone, in which case that's probably that fine. That would stop working as well. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> yeah, so as I said, um, way back when, we thought the core was fully molten. And then basically it took us 30 years after Oldham discovered, sort of, or thought he discovered a molten core mm. before we realized that um, that it wasn't quite it wasn't quite as simple as that. And that's when the, the Dutch person came in and, um, and then said... Mm. Actually, <laughs> the Dutch was, person came in. <laughs> Inga Lemon, Inga Lemon. <laughs> Look, I, come on, don't do this to me. Um, I said Dutch, Dan Danish. Oh, bloody I think no. I'm sorry to all the Danes out there. <laughs> so, what do you think lives down in the middle of the earth? Not lives. in the middle of the earth, but yeah. Do you think there's a, what's the deepest you think something is living? Not in water. It's not Brendan Fraser. Sorry, I'll stop making that joke. <laughs> <laughs> he died along with his career a Wait, long, so long time ago. It's just the deep sea, then. No, no, no. In, um, in so in the earth, there are caves. Remember, there are deep caves. Oh, yeah. living. Yeah, there's some things living down there. Interesting. So I'm guessing like little beetles. Well, not quite a beetle. Like it's bacteria. Well, <gasps> oh, that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Even smaller. Jump, Basically, the bugs me. of bugs. Champ, you just tell me what's down there, and I'll believe you. I don't know. I don't know why. I feel like I'm outnumbered today. <laughs> there you go. Beatles, bugs, and Brendan Fraser are all down there in the center of the earth. <laughs> the three Bs. The three Bs. No. So if you go to about a thousand meters down, that, that's you, you'll still find life down there. Um, I really wanted you to exp like give me an example of how far away the thousand meters was. Um. So a kilometer. So right. Do you know? You, you know you're running. Yes. Do you, can you figure out a kilometer from your running? <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. You can run down to the line. <laughs> you want, just run straight no, down, Bliss. Want to run down there? <laughs> it take you. I don't know. It take. Go you. see them. <laughs> take you what? Like five minutes to run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if I run five minutes down, what would I find again? Tell me. <laughs> Life. <laughs> haven't told you. <laughs> haven't got a chance to tell you yet. No. Um. Yeah, so little, essentially little bugs, uh, invertebrates, little thing, little things like that. Yeah, like bugs. Yeah, um, there's so there's springtails and mites, um, but also there are um, slightly there's so there are little bugs, slightly bigger sort of bugs. Um, <clears throat> uh, specifically, there's this there's this centipede which lives one thousand one hundred meters down there um, and is named after Pluto, the Greek god of, oh. Well, oh. Not the, dead, of the underworld. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you can find like bugs and centipedes and whatnot. Um, but if you're looking for the deepest animal living, um, the, well, the deepest animal that lives on land, um, how deep do you think that might be? Should we say at the same time? I Jeff? think if you dig far enough down, you'll find humans again. <gasps> I think if you go t about twelve thousand kilometers <laughs> down, you'll, you'll reach humans. <laughs> You just got to keep going and going and going and you'll get there. 
I don't know the actual answer. Three thousand <laughs> kilometers. I think that's sensible. Well, it's it's a little bit. It's wait, three thousand. I assume meters. No, 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 three thousand kilometers. I'm saying. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's in the middle of the mantle. Yeah. Well, that no, it's, no, no, no. Three thousand is still in the crust. Five to seventy-five. Um, oh shit! No, three thousand as well into the three, mantle. Yeah, three thousand kilometers. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's not that. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not a little bit off, I think. Okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's actually about one thousand, uh, just under one thousand two hundred meters. No, it's just under two thousand meters. Down. Oh. Okay. So um, that's in the deepest cave that we know of, the deepest okay. natural cave, um, and yeah, it it is. Um, it is this, it's this springtail. It's this little insect um, that's named after, um, that's named after Pluto. It's just, it's just living down there. Spring. I said, um, I said that the Greek god of the underworld was Pluto earlier on. It's Hades. I was going to say it's Hades, right? It's Hades, yeah. yeah. Oh. I got I just confused. Believed you. Yeah, you do. I was no. like, maybe they changed it. <laughs> <laughs> they might have done. Look, this thing is, right? They're the same thing, right? The the Greek gods and the Roman gods. Yeah. They're, the Romans just nicked them and, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, I've started a new religion. New religion. <laughs> um, this is this is my god. He his father sent him down. Yeah, he died. Then he came back three days later. He did. His name is Jessica. Jessica <laughs> Cross. So you're gonna pick another god name. Gonna, his name is Anubis. Nope. His name is Jessica, Jessica. Cross. <laughs> and it's my religion and no Jessica one else's. Jessica Cross. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> original gods do not steal um yeah and the thing with animals living down there is that it's they're really isolated environments obviously because things don't tend to go down to those caves very mm. often do they <laughs> no so it's kind of like mm. it's kind of like um the, the thing is that if you've got an animal down there it their their biodiversity is pretty low because they basically all have to be somewhat incestuous because there's there's mm. not much mixing with other environments, mixing with other um, populations. There is that population living yeah. down in that cave and that's where they live and that's how that's where they need to live. So if something was to suddenly change, um, they could go extinct really quickly because oh they wouldn't necessarily be able to adapt. To adapt. There's not much diversity going mm -hmm. on there. Um, so that's probably why you probably don't want to live down in a cave if you're, say, a springtail or whatever. You know, you probably want to live somewhere easier to stay alive. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I was going to say, if I'm ever a springtail, <laughs> I'll be sure not to go there. Oh, you, you bloody better be. Um, so, how deep do you think we've dug? What's the deepest you think we've gone? Hmm. 3,000 kilometers. <laughs> You're just saying 3,000 kilometers. Right? It'll yeah. be right eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be. Um, it, it will not be. <laughs> hmm. What's the deepest we've ever... Well, clearly we found those bugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be at least like 2,000 meters. Minimum. 3,000 meters. You're sticking with 3,000. <laughs> You're determined to get 3,000 in there somehow. It's not 3,000. Please. <laughs> I'm going to say 2,001 meters. <laughs> it's much deeper than that, actually. Really? Yeah. So it's 12.2 it's 12 thousand um, meters. 12.2 kilometers. Yeah. So uh, do you, who do you think dug that hole? <laughs> what? What country? Um, what, oh, right. What group of people? Not a, not an individual. <laughs> Brendan Fraser. <laughs> no. He is really getting it. He is taking no. a beating for you. Today. <laughs> no, he's Russia. Been, he's been treated horribly. Well, wow. Yeah, it was the Soviets. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Oh, my God. Good job. <laughs> How did you get that? I just felt it. Russia did everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, yeah. It, 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 it's like a second space race almost, yes. you know? Yes. Um. So they dug this during, they dug this during the Cold War. And I do love this image, right? Of... The Americans and the Russians during the Cold War just being like, what can we do to outdo these guys? Okay, okay. The Russians are going to go to space. Send someone as far away from Earth as you can. The Russians are trying to get as close to the center. Send them down there. Send them as far down as you can. Like, like what else? Like, even like, I think, even like um, sporting events and stuff. Mm. Um, you've seen, have you seen, um, what's it called? The, the Queen's Gambit, right? No. No. Not seen Queen Gambit. Neither of you seen Queen Gambit. I saw you watching it once. I watched a bit of an episode. I saw you oh, watching it. I do remember it. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How, was I enjoying it? How did I feel? You seemed to be enjoying it. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. That, that made up. me happy. Oh, oh that's, that's really lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it was no, a nice shared not. experience, even though I had no idea what was going Perhaps on. Perhaps I'll send you some videos of me watching it again. In the future. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Relive the good times. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, so my point here is that um, it felt like it feels like the US and Russia were really just competing on every, like the entire everything was a massive pissing contest. When it yes, to science, um, exploration, digging deep holes, all of it. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, the Soviets were trying to drill as deep as possible um, into the crust and try and get to the mantle if they could. Um, and so it was like. It was this. Um, it was this sort of big competition. Um, so there was a German scientist um, who was working for the Germans at the same time, and he said um, <clears throat> there was certainly competition between us. One of the main motivations was that the Russians were simply not really open with their data. When the Russians started to, and when the Russians started to drill, um, they said they basically said that they found water, like just water flitting about, um, and people didn't just didn't believe it because they thought that. Um, it would be too dense for water to permeate through yeah. at that point. Um, and essentially the goal, uh, what they, they, they want to, obviously they want to dig as deep as possible. But what they want to do is try and get samples of the mantle because we can kind of sample the mantle in sort of places where it's closer to the surface, mm -hmm. but it's not sampling the mantle as it is now. It's more sampling the mantle as it used to be millions of years ago. Mm -hmm. We want like a current sample of the mantle, mm -hmm. right? So the reason that it, so the reason it'd be like sampling millions of years ago is because that's what the mantle would have been like millions of years ago. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But Whereas if you dig deep down into what it is now. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Yeah. Um and this this um uh <clears throat> this uh this person who works for the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science um says in places like Oman you can find the mantle close to the surface but that's mantle as it was millions of years ago. Essentially it's like um the, the difference between um getting uh they say a living dinosaur and a dinosaur fossil. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we want to try and get to the mantle. Yeah. Um. So the Russians, what they, the, well, the Soviets, what they dug was the Kola Super Deep Borehole. Um. Like I said, it's twelve point two kilometers deep. How thick do you think it is? Very thin. I'm going to say three centimeters. Three centimeters. Well, it's more yeah. than that. It's, it's still more? thin. It's thin. It's okay. thin. Okay. You know, it's not a girthy hole, but it's four centimeters. It's more than. It's more than that. 10 centimeters it's about nine inches oh yeah that is pretty thin considering yeah, it's definitely 12 thin. kilometers deep <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like it's just pretty thin isn't it it's pretty thin no um <laughs> oh i can't even feel, fit myself down there um <laughs> <laughs> so no it's it's nine it's nine inches wide so it's thin um but they what they wanted to they wanted to dig deeper. It took them about twenty years uh, to get that deep. Uh, well, it took them about twenty years, yeah, um, to get that to get that deep, um, which is about maybe half the distance or less to the mantle where they were digging. Um, and they found they found a bunch of stuff. They found um, plankton fossils about four miles down, mm. um, and then they had to give it up in nineteen ninety two um, because they were they were drilling they were drilling. And the temperatures just got way, way hotter than they thought they than they thought they would. About two hundred and twelve oh degrees. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it was. So this is in Fahrenheit. So it was um, three hundred fifty six degrees Fahrenheit, um, which was a lot hotter than the two hundred and twelve <laughs> degrees that they were expecting. That's like that was like their limit. Yeah. Right. So it it got way hotter than that. Um, obviously, hot is not good for drill. Drill break if hot. Ah, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So they had to stop drilling. They were like, "Okay, it is getting too hot. It, it won't work." And also, when you're when you're drilling down that deep, if you think about it, when you start to drill really, really deep, um, um, and the temperature gets higher and higher and higher, it's more liquid that you're kind of drilling through. Which means that if you're drilling, it's hard to keep the hole open oh, because of course. it's getting more. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like if you were to like in, instead of like like you know we think of digging as just digging a hole that's all the same stuff that's really easy but yeah. like imagine if the, the deeper that you dug right the more watery the like the like the more muddy oh. the ground got well oh. yeah you've done you guys have done that right at the beach yeah and you start digging beach. and you start digging and then the water and then eventually you're twelve thousand <laughs> meters down and then you're in china <laughs> and then yeah no i, I just and you're stuck there with no passport you've got to learn yourself no. some mandarin Oh, dig that your was way a, back. That was a bloody awful summer. I'll tell you that, Liz. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Wait, but I am thinking right, right? And you dig down, and then it gets watery, so it's like stops becoming. I mean, stop being able to dig, and it just 
fills in. Yeah, yeah but that, that's more because of sort of groundwater rather than... Well, I know. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's the same principle. <laughs> no, I know, okay. Yeah. No, it's, it's similar. Yeah, no, yeah, It works the same way. It gets wetter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a good point. I, I don't <laughs> think it's not a good point. <laughs> I'm just, I know I, it's a good point. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm just saying that it's for different reasons. That's all. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank I'll you. Stand, I'll stand up for you. No, that, the reason it gets more liquidy as you dig towards the center <laughs> of the earth is because it's getting hotter. The reason it gets more yes. liquidy on the beach is because there's just water there. There's actual. Yeah. Yeah. It's just water. <laughs> <There's> actual water. <laughs> <laughs> but it, water is still a liquid, like the liquid in the earth. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm sticking up here. These two liquids are both liquids. <laughs> that's true. Flipping that's up. why I agree with you. I'm not disputing that. I, I never disagreed with you on that. Liz. I never did. <laughs> you can't blame her for the beach not being hot. Okay. <laughs> the beach is hot. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> that hot. <laughs> Clearly, it's not that hot. <sighs> so they were struggling to keep it as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was. They were struggling to dig the hole, they were struggling to keep the hole open, uh, and they eventually gave up. Um, what I've got here, it says, um, it's like trying to keep a pit in the center of a hot pot of soup. Mm. Which, yeah, I mean, like, it's hard to, it's hard to keep a liquid to stay, like, keep a hole in liquid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that was it, they gave up, and that's the deepest that we've ever dug, 12.2 kilometers down. But I want to give you, um, you both an idea of sort of how deep that is right so i've got some things here we can just we can just go on a journey to the center of the earth right really briefly just us three so <clears throat> we start at 0 0.7 meters that's rabbits and moles that's where they go yep. that's where that's how deep they burrow okay and then um a grave is about 1.8 meters Ooh, right six feet six feet yeah, yeah it's about it's about my height yeah <clears throat> which means if i was standing up in my grave that'd probably be fine you just like, <laughs> you can just pet your hair all I'd need would be a little straw, stick it out the ground. You can't bury me alive. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, and then three meters, you've got the deep, uh, deep earthworms. Uh, so <clears throat> giant earthworms that can get up to be to being more than a meter long. So longer than this. Ooh. Which yeah, right. I don't want to know. You don't want to know? No, I, I don't think it's know. cool. So no. they can go. They can be about three meters down. Um, five meters is the depth um, for a ten meter platform of an Olympic swimming pool. Oh. So if you dig five meters down, you basically dug yourself an Olympic swimming pool. Nice. Oh. Um, and then eight meters down, we've got a mole man. So basically, um, a man burrowed eight meters underneath his house over forty, like for like he spent forty years doing it. Yeah. Um, starting in the nineteen sixties, finishing in the two thousands. A merman, like a, a mole man. A mole man. Yeah, no, mole man. He he he, oh, he does right. like a mole. He, he built himself a burrow. Okay, yeah, okay, sorry. Eight meters underground. Um, there's an underground city, 18 meters um, under um, Beijing. Ooh. Uh, the Paris. Have you been to the Paris Catacombs? No. It's 20 meters down. Oh, that's fine. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I jumped disgusted by the depth. Of no, I watched a horror catacombs. film about the oh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. That's yeah. above so below or something. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> there's the Sarlacc pit. How deep do you think the Sarlacc pit is? Never heard of it. That's in Star heard? Wars. Yeah. We can measure the depth that's of the Sarlacc. That's real. Okay. Still has depth. I'll entertain it. Um, <laughs> hold on. What did we just get to? What was the last number? The last number. It's got to be we'll, a step above that. We'll have no bearing on it. Just, just give it a go. Oh, okay. Um, it will be deeper than the last number. Okay. Sarlacc pit is three hundred meters. One hundred meters. Oh, yeah. No, one hundred meters. Um, that's how. It's also how uh, deep you bury nuclear waste, right? So we're only a hundred meters right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of stuff already. Yeah, a lot of stuff already. In the earth up. How and did it's... Boba Fett get out of that? I don't know. Mm. Well, you have to watch The Mandalorian yeah, sequel series. Out. Yes. The Boba Fett tales or whatever Disney are calling the it. The book of Boba Fett. Please pay us money. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, so that's a, that's 100 meters. Right? Let's go a little bit farther. Let's jump um, to the Chilean miners. Um, remember when they were stuck yes. um, in 2010 for 69 days? That was 700 meters, oh right? Still not the deepest, that we, even nearly the deepest that we've dug. Um, <clears throat> and the deepest bat colony is 1,000, hold on, I said, yeah, 700 meters. So it's 1,000, uh, just over 1,000 meters. Some bats live down there. The Grand Canyon is <gasps> 1,600 meters. Wow. Wow. That's cool. So it's, it's, the Grand Canyon is like maybe just over 10% of the deepest hole that we've ever dug. Um, 
And then, I mean... <laughs> like the Grand Canyon was a hole we dug. <laughs> that made it sound like... <laughs> no, the Grand Canyon is definitely not a hole that we dug. <laughs> it is just... It, like, if you've been to the Grand Canyon... Right, so if, you, if you've been to the Grand Canyon, right? Well, okay. Right, think about... Remember the Grand Canyon? <laughs> yes. Sir. Multiply that by, like, ten. I've seen pictures of it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. deep, isn't it? Yeah. It's deep. Yeah, deep. It was a good... It was a deep 2D image that I saw. <laughs> it was... It, yeah. It looked pretty deep. Yeah. So, then we've got um, a hen's egg cracking... Um, at 2330 meters which still what? isn't even nearly half how of the deepest it, hole how did it get there what no and a, a hen's egg will crack if you take it down that deep how do they know oh, that because okay. of the pressure <laughs> okay okay, like, okay. recorded an, an, a hen's egg cracking at 2000 meters like how did it get there <laughs> Someone drilled the hole and they dropped it in. Accidentally. It's like they, they were digging their <laughs> hole and they were they had their lunch and they dropped their egg down. And then it just splattered it at the bottom. Not that's even it. at the bottom. It exploded on the way down. Yeah, on the way down. <laughs> no, uh, that's not oh, what happened. Dear. No, just because the pressure. Because um, the pressure there is about two hundred thirty-four atmospheres. So two hundred thirty-four times what you what you're used to right now, which is that's heavy. It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and yeah, then about about just over twelve thousand kilometers is the Kola super deep borehole. Um, at that point, 4,000 atmospheres of pressure you'd be feeling. Apparently, that's the same as 54 elephants standing on top <gasps> of your head. Oh. Which, like, I feel like one elephant is too exactly. much. Exactly. Well, yeah, one elephant in your head wouldn't be there, would it? Be so. under the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, we, we, we go lower and lower and lower. And um, someone's going to say this, by the way. We've been saying that lava is in, this, is in, is in the earth. It's magma. Right, it's magma. That's okay, in wait, is in... But it, it, becomes lava. Lava it becomes lava when it comes out. When it comes out. <gasps> yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Wait, but hang on. But there's still lava. Wait, it comes out of what? comes out of a volcano? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's magma inside a volcano, sorry. Or yes. lava is inside. Inside the earth, and then it shoots up through the volcano, like a pimple. At which okay. point it becomes lava. Lava. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, for example... Um, the Yellowstone, and even deeper, just a little bit deeper at 1,500, uh, 15,000 meters, um, is the Yellowstone um, magma chamber. So the super volcano at Yellowstone, the magma chamber is wow. just a little bit deeper than the deepest hole we've wow. ever dug. And I mean, that's how deep things are. I mean, if you go to a little bit deeper, 150,000 meters, that's where diamonds start to form. Oh my gosh. Um, and then um, at the center of the earth, right down into the center, um, that's 3.6 million atmospheres which is 47,700 elephants standing on your head. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Whatever. at that point, it's like, it's not, it's not a number you can conceptualize. Bring another one. And a, come on, another <laughs> elephant. I want one. Give me more. Give me more. I <laughs> know <laughs> that is the deepest hole we've ever dug. That's the story of how we know what's at the center of the earth and how deep we can go. That is terrifying. It is terrifying, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's slightly less terrifying than our, uh, our deep water episode. Right, which you should all go back and listen to, by the mm. way, because I feel like at the right, we we're pretty sure that nothing is really living in this. Like as we get as we go deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah. Again, we could potentially be wrong. Yeah. It's unlikely, but we could be wrong in the same way that we thought that things couldn't live as deep um, in the ocean as they do. But um, the ocean is scarier because um, it is cold and yeah. dark, <laughs> and things are living there. <laughs> yeah, I'd say out of the three, which is like space, the ocean. And the the Earth, mm. I'd say the Earth is the least scary. Yeah, I think it goes yeah. ocean, space, Earth. It's something about the ocean. So, well, the, okay, right. Here's the thing: space and the ocean are fundamentally the same thing, mm -hmm. right? They're they're functionally for a person deep deep in the ocean and deep in space, exact same thing, yeah. right? Because you need a special suit to be in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's issues with pressure that means that if there was any issue with your suit. You would be straight. You'd be immediately dead. You need some kind of vessel to get around. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. If you get lost from your vessel, you are probably going to be alone forever. Mm -hmm. Like you, it, it'd be almost impossible to find and get to you. Yeah. Um, the only difference is that things can eat you in the ocean. Yes. Things can't eat you in space. There is. Yeah. There's nothing to eat you in space. <laughs> Therefore, space is less scary than the ocean. Yeah. It's right. like a black hole. A black hole can eat you. But then that's unlikely. That's, that's uh, unlikely. I mean, that's un yeah. it's not going to eat you so much as it's just going to spaghettify you. Yeah, you become spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a black hole becomes like the lady in the tramp. It's just <laughs> sucking you up. Quite, delicious. Quite a nice image. Yeah, it is. What a lovely way to end this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness uh. me. Well, <clears throat> I'm terribly sorry for the off the rails insanity 
of the day to everyone listening. I'm sure we'll be back to normal very soon. <laughs> or not, our past few episodes have been really off the rails, no, haven't they? It just gets worse from here. It's been going downhill. It's been yes. well, not just downhill, right down into the earth. That's where yeah. we're going. If you join our Patreon, yeah. join our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash side guys. If we hit, I don't know, a million patrons, we will dig. And we won't stop digging. <laughs> we won't stop. All Until of our we resources. Beat the record. <laughs> we will beat it. <clears throat> and we'll beat it with a shovel and some perseverance. Yes. Some elbow grease. <laughs> 13,000 meters. Kilometers. What? Meters. Do, do more than that. Let's do. Let's no, 12,000 kilometers is the entire earth. That's, let's do 15. Good. Let's do 15 kilometers. 15 kilometers. Let's do 15 kilometers. Okay. I think if we go to Yellowstone and just, just dump into the magma pit. Then we'll be fine, right? Because we've already gotten that. Because we've already gotten that down farther. Yeah. We just need to dig a tiny little bit of a hole. Yeah. Smart, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it is the end of the episode, as you both know, and that means that it's time for my favorite part of the episode. It is time for the quick fire quiz round. <gasps> dun 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 dun. Earth edition. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you're saying it sounds. It's the same sort of cadence as one division. Earth edition, Earth edition, Earth edition, Earth edition, Earth edition. So, the rules of the quick fire quiz are as follows: Earth edition. I must ask you a question. One question between the two of you. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer wins. But you've got to let me finish asking the question before you can buzz in with your answer. So, <clears throat> what are your buzzers, Bliss? What is your buzzer? Beep. Oh, very good buzzer. Thank that you. was a horrible swear word. Just said. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you come on this podcast and say that. Honestly, I mean, like, try and say it again. See if it's with it again. <laughs> Beep. Jeez. Horrible to hear, isn't it? Children oh. watching. Disgusting. Jan, what's your buzz? Buzz. <gasps> Which is digging to the center of the earth. Oh, that's the whole thing. <laughs> You've got to do the whole thing now. <laughs> 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 You could have done the whole Oh, God, it's a long episode. <laughs> 20 years later. <laughs> so, my question for both of you is Are you ready? Yes. So well ready. done. No. <laughs> <laughs> How deep is the deepest man made hole on Earth? Uh, oh. Ooh. Beep. Bliss. Ooh, flip it back. I'll take approximate. Okay. It's in meters. Whatever units you want. 13. Okay, no, then. <laughs> it's I of... passed a jump. Uh, is it... <laughs> is it 12,000 <gasps> meters? Well done, that's right. 12 Whee! kilometers. Ding, ding, ding. ding, ding but 12.2 kilometers down, it is the Cola Super Deep Borehole. Well done. Yeah, good job. That's, Thank you. I think that's. I think that's it. Jokes were memory with thirteen. I was like, oh, it's just been. <laughs> <laughs> it was teamwork. I think. I think we got yeah, that together. Yeah. Yeah. You both get the point. I think. Thank both you. Thank you. Well. <laughs> well, I think that is it from us. Thank you very much for joining us, Bliss. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming back. It got very deep today, didn't it? It's so deep, deeper than I was expecting. Oh, very much deeper than I was. <laughs> we all feeling good though. We all good, feeling good after our deep, deep chat. Today. Yes. Yeah. Love yes, a good deep meeting. <laughs> TMC. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Well, that is it for today's episode. But before we go, we'd like to give a very special thank you to all of our patrons with an even more special thank you to our executive producers, Ashley Muller and Anani May. And thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or you can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCore everywhere. You can follow me at Jamkin everywhere. Don't follow me, I'm Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.